Hi TF, my name is Kelo Wuchato. Can you can you please kindly assist me with this question? It says that the terms for x and y form an arithmetic sequence, whilst x, y, and 18 are successive terms in a geometric sequence. Determine the values of x and y. Okay, so immediately arithmetic sequence should spring forth that they have a common first difference. Arithmetic is also a linear. And that should immediately tell you that there's a common first difference. But how do we express that uh, mathematically? We're going to say that term 2 minus term 1, if we subtract 4 from x, we're going to get a common, we're going to get a first difference, is equal to, if we subtract x from y, term 3 minus term 2. They're going to give us the same answer, okay? Geometric sequence, what does that mean? If you said it has a common ratio, you are 100% correct, but how do we find the common ratio? We divide terms. So term 2 divided by term 1 is going to give us the same answer as if we divide term 3 by term 2. Okay, so how does that help us solve for x and y? Well, if we substitute into these two formulae, first with the linear sequence, term 2 is x minus term 1, which is 4, will give us the same first difference as if we say y minus x. So I'm going to express these in terms of y. So if we make y the subject of the formula, x plus another x is 2x minus 4. And that is going to give us our first equation. Now remember, if we're trying to find two different variables, we need two simultaneous equations. Okay. So to deal with our geometric sequence, term 2 is y divided by term 1, which is x, will give us the same answer as if we say 18 divided by y. And now let's try and simplify this. So if we cross multiply, we're going to get y squared is equal to 18x. And that gives us our second equation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 1 into 2. So that means every time I see a y in the second equation, I simply rewrite it as 2x minus 4. So here we have y squared. So 2x minus 4 squared is going to be equal to 18x. Okay. So now let's multiply out those brackets. 2x squared is 4x squared minus twice their product. So 4 times 2 is 8 x multiplied by 2 is 16 x and then we square the last term and we get 16. Now we need to subtract 18 x and we get 0 standard form. Okay so 4 x squared minus 16 minus 18 is 34 negative 34 x plus 16 equals 0. So now it makes it so much simpler if we divide all of this by 2 so we get 2x squared minus 17x plus 8 is equal to 0. So now some of you guys might be able to find the factors of this and some of you might just want to plug it into the quadratic equation. But I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to say that negative 17x is the same as saying negative 16x minus another x because those two are going to give me 17x plus 8. And now remember when you did factorization, factorizing by grouping, let's take out a common factor in these two terms. We get 2x. We're going to multiply by x to get the first term and multiply by 8, negative 8 to get the second term. Now if we take out negative 1 from these two terms, we're going to get x minus 8. And now you see we have a common factor bracket, so we can group the other two factors. We get 2x minus 1 into x minus 8 equals 0. Now remember, by your zero product theorem, if two things are multiplied by each other, one of them has to equal 0. So 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to a half, or x is equal to 8. And that makes perfect sense because we have a quadratic equation over here, which means we could have two different x values that satisfy this quadratic equation. Now, to find the y values, 
We simply substitute these x values into one of our y equations. Now remember, our first equation we had y is equal to 2x plus 4. So, to find the y value that corresponds to x equals a half, we say y is equal to 2 multiplied by a half plus 4, which is the same as saying 1 plus 4, which is 5. So remember, these two are a pair. x equals a half, y equals 5, or, and now we do the same thing for this situation over here. So y is equal to 2x plus 5 y is equal to 2 multiplied by 8 plus 4, which is the same as 16 plus 4, which gives us 20. Okay, so remember, if you solve for a value of x and you substitute it to get a y value, they correspond together, which is why I wrote these two here. Or we have x is equal to 8, y is equal to 20.